On this video, we will see how long a 12 volt lithium battery can power a TV. We will find out how to determine the actual power consumption of this TV and how to convert the 12 volt voltage to power it. So, in your opinion, are there any losses to consider in our calculations? That's what we will explore together. Even if the electrical diagram remains simple, we will create one as usual. One diagram with the converter and another without. You will understand a bit later in this video the idea I have in mind. It will be a good exercise to help you calculate your consumption. But before we begin, feel free to check out our electrical diagram pack in the video description. Also, consider subscribing to the channel, giving a thumbs up and don't hesitate to ask your questions in the comments. Before starting the calculations, I will show you three ways to determine your TV's power consumption. Nowadays. It's not so simple if you don't have the device with you, because I've noticed that most online stores now list annual consumption in kilowatt hours. This is not very convenient for us and already requires some calculations, but you can always refer to the user manual to find the information. If you already have the TV with you, it's very easy. What I prefer is to plug in a smart socket and in the most common app, Tuya, you have an electric or energy tab that shows you real-time power consumption, a reliable and simple way to get the actual consumption, which in this case is about 82 watts. The last solution is to check the label on the back of your TV. As you can see, it indicates 157 watts of power, which is higher than what I measured. So if I run this TV for an hour, rounding up to 85 watts, that gives us 85 watt hours. I have a large TV and I find it consumes quite a bit, but power usage mainly depends on the size and quality of your screen. Before talking about the converter, let's diagram this very simple setup. I always connect a fuse sized according to the power I will draw from the converter. A fuse panel allows additional devices to be connected later. I also add a disconnect switch to be able to turn off the converter. You'll soon understand why. So to power this TV, we will need a converter. The first thing to know is that a converter has an efficiency of about 90%. To account for the extra consumption due to conversion losses, we divide 85 watts by 0.9, which gives us 94.44 watts, but that's not all. When I plug in my converter without the TV, it has an idle consumption of about 20 watts. 20 watts per one hour equals 20 watt hours. Keep these values in mind to understand what comes next. To calculate the runtime and determine how long we can power this TV, let's take a look at the specifications of the battery I used as an example. It's a 12.8 volt lithium battery with a capacity of 150 ampere hours. 12.8 volts multiplied by 150 ampere hours equals 1920 watt hours. Normally, we can use up to 90% of this capacity with LiPo4 cells. However, be careful. If you are still using GEL lead acid batteries, the calculation should only consider 50% of the rated watt hour capacity. That means only 960 watt hours. Now, let's calculate the TV's runtime while considering the converter's efficiency and its idle consumption. The TV consumes 85 watts at the converter's output, but as we mentioned earlier, there is an efficiency loss. This gives us 94.44 watts. Additionally, we must add the converter's idle consumption of 20 watts, resulting in a total consumption of 114.44 watts. Now, let's calculate the current drawn from the battery. 114.44 watts divided by 12.8 volts equals 8.95 amperes. For the battery's runtime, we have a capacity of 150 ampere hours, but we won't discharge it beyond 90%, so we will use a base of 135 ampere hours. To calculate the battery's runtime with a load of 114.44 watts, we divide 135 ampere hours by the calculated current of 8.95 amperes, which gives us 15.1 hours. To convert that 15.1 hours into hours and minutes, the whole number, 15 represents the hours. The decimal part, 0.1, is multiplied by 60 to get the minutes. So, 15.1 hours actually equals 15 hours and 6 minutes of usage, stopping at a 90% depth of discharge for this battery. If you have a gel lead acid battery, what would the runtime be? Many of you haven't switched to lithium yet. By the way, the battery I'm using here is actually more expensive than the eco-worthy lithium model. We now find ourselves with batteries that are both less efficient and more expensive. But let's do the calculation quickly. A 150 ampere hour battery with a discharge limit of only 50% gives us just 75 ampere hours of usable capacity. The current drawn from the battery remains the same. 
With a total power consumption of 114.44 watts divided by 12.8 volts, we still get 8.95 amperes. No change here. Now, 75 ampere hours divided by 8.95 amperes gives us 8.38 hours. To convert 0.38 hours into minutes, 30 bait case steals 23 minutes. So the estimated runtime is 8 hours and 23 minutes with a GL lead acid battery compared to 15 hours and 6 minutes with a lithium battery. In some cases, it is possible to avoid using a converter that transforms direct current into alternating current. Your TV sometimes comes with a power adapter that already converts AC power to DC at 19 volts to power your TV. In this case, you can use a small converter that steps up 12 volts to 19 volts. Since both voltages are already in direct current, the efficiency will be much better with almost no losses. This can significantly extend the usage time and reduce power consumption.